Welcome to Pop Law Podcast. I'm your host, Desiree, and I'm still not your attorney. This is Pop Law Breakdown. Pop Law Breakdown is a segment of the show that breaks down the law related to the topic of our guest episode. On this episode of Pop Law Breakdown, I will be diving into important deal terms of recording agreements. On the episode with BB, we discuss the leverage in recording agreements when artists sign as new artists and how terms of those agreements may not be as fair when they blow up. Now let's look into these contract terms. A recording agreement is a legally binding contract that allows record companies to exploit artist performance and sound recordings in return for royalty payments. Royalty payments go to recording artists, songwriters, composers, publishers, and other copyright holders for the right to use their intellectual property. Royalties are also called points or percentages on a record. The royalty payment that an artist receives varies, but in all cases, the artist shall receive receive the majority of the distribution. An advance is money that the label gives to an artist upon signing an agreement. The company pays a sum of money to the artist, but that is paid after they recoup their money. Essentially, an advance is a loan and the label must recoup all the money they put into the career before the artist sees any money. Cross-collateralization is also an important concept in recording agreements, and it is also tied to recoupment. For example, if the label gives you $100,000 for album number one, and they only make back $80,000 on the money that they put into you, then you owe them $20,000, and that is added to the debt you owe them for album number two. So let's get into the length of recording agreements. The length of a recording agreement varies based on the deal that you sign. For purposes of this conversation, let's just say the recording agreement has a term of one year with options to renew for additional periods of one year. An option is the record label's ability to extend the contract and to add another album. Because we're family, I'm gonna give you all a little tip. The ability to exercise options should be mutual. The song length is important because it counts to whether or not the album is really satisfying the minimum album commitment, which also is key language in your recording agreement. You do not want to get into an issue whether or not the song actually counts. Ultimately, Understanding and defining each and every term in a recording agreement is critical to avoid being in a situation like Megan Thee Stallion fighting to make her releases count as an album. Make sure you clearly define the running time, what constitutes a technically satisfactory album, and what constitutes a commercially viable album. Don't rush. So while becoming an artist is very important and record deals may change your life, again, take your time, learn those contract provisions, and understand the business of music. Pop Law is presented to you by Revolt Podcast Network and available on all streaming platforms. Be sure to subscribe to the Pop Law YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Law Breakdown. I'm your host, Desiree, and I'm still not your attorney. Disclaimer, this episode is strictly for entertainment and educational purposes only. It is not meant to be construed as legal advice in any form.